The accounts of life in a country like Honduras paint a mural of hopelessness depicting in bright colors the many reasons for leaving here to seek a better life. Mainly the decision of migrating is acknowledging that you don't have the conditions to live with human dignity in the country. La falta de empleo hace Jobs are scarce for everyone in the country. These women facing this situation are living a nightmare. There is a breaking point and, and, and society is tired. Uh, society is tired and, and we have no hope. These are the roots of migration, a despair that leads to departure, like the gender-based violence that social researcher Rocio Walkiria says is prevalent. So many Honduran women who are dealing with domestic violence decide to migrate away from that situation. Hector Lainez, a Methodist pastor in Ciudad España outside the capital of Tegucigalpa, sees an economic problem. The loss of jobs nationwide is a huge reason for people to continue to migrate. And then there are the gangs that mercilessly prey on young boys and men. At 13, a friend of mine started teaching me some bad ways on the street. I started as a lookout. They saw potential in me and told me I should be part of them because I was sharp. Carlos is a former gang member, or pandilla, who found God and left the streets, but not the country. Many times, these people got involved with the gangs and it doesn't end well. Maybe the gangs are looking to kill them and decide to migrate. Some other times, gang members who are at war with other gangs decide to leave before they get killed. But there are people in this country working daily to fix this. At El Hogar, Norma Andino has worked with children for 30 years. It is definitely part of our goal to help these kids thrive in their country. El Hogar is a boarding school catering to kids like Guillermo, who says that he has nothing back home in San Pedro Sula, but still he wants to stay in his country. They also have a technical school where a student was receiving an auto mechanic lesson while we were there, learning a trade when there may not be a job. While there is hustle and bustle and life in places like Villanueva Cortes here in Honduras, there is also the idea that so much has to do with the poverty in this country. However, it's not just the poor that need to be responsible for making change, it's those of privilege. And it's just because, you know, it's my fate. They were born on a stable home and they have the means to make a change. I asked Juan Celines, a private school teacher in Tegucigalpa not related to Pastor Hector, who, if any of his students, stayed to try to make the country better. Without pausing, he answered Rafael Jerez. Okay, we have had the opportunities, but we need to contribute to other people to have them too. So if we leave, nothing is going to change. Jerez, a lawyer, says that a corrupt system keeps a vicious status quo in place in his country is how can you make people understand that if corruption is a part of the way in which we live, the country cannot progress. In a land of so much juxtaposition, Line as the teacher is also, of course, a bassist in a heavy metal band, Delirium. Heavy metal relates exactly to this place for so many reasons. Uh, our songs talk about the discrepancy of justice in our country talks about the big gap between the rich and the poor. Linus says that the 2016 delirium song Honduras has a lyric that describes his country best. Tierra de nadie, botín de bandidos, which is land of no one, but there's a big treasure if you belong to the people that actually have the means. <laughs>